And so having students enrolled in my classes is my livelihood. It's, it's you know, it's my paycheck. Uh, and we've had reducing numbers. And so always looking for a way to be innovative and, and keep up um, with the times and to increase uh, student enrollment. So it doesn't seem to be just a Windsor High School thing. It seems to be a national trend with declining enrollment in CTE. Uh, and so I found these figures, uh, and uh, it's a um, nces.ed.gov. Uh, and so they've tracked over, the, or over 19 years the, the enrollment trends in different uh, courses. And as you can see, CTE uh, is on a pretty steady decline uh, throughout the whole, pretty much the, the whole time frame. This is data from Windsor High School specifically. Um, so you can see a steady decline in the last uh, five or six years in the number of enrollment requests. Uh, and I got this, these, uh, these numbers from our uh, registrar. So she, she's really good with, with providing us with numbers like uh, for this type of thing. Um, so our enrollment at the school has been declining, uh, but also the requests for uh, Tech Ed and CTE classes were on the decline. So I want to cover a little bit about the steps to implementing STEM guitar and then how I designed it to work at, at our school. So I was part of the 2004, uh, 2014, excuse me, cohort at Central Connecticut. So I was 45 minutes away from there where I lived. So I was, I was commuting each day in um, for that guitar institute. Uh, in 2014-15, right after taking the um, STEM Guitar Institute, I piloted the program with two students, independent study students, and that allowed me to build two more guitars and kind of keep my, um, my memory up of what we had done in the Institute. And that same year, I proposed to the school board that we bring this program uh, as an offering to Windsor High School, and they loved it. There's usually a one-year wait period for new classes, so you can write the curriculum and get it approved and then run it the following year. Uh, but they liked it so much that they waived the one-year um, wait period, and they said, if you write the curriculum this year, we'll run it next year. Uh, they were just, they were all about it. And my district is really good uh, about putting the money where their, their, their mouth is. They say they, they like STEM and they support STEM, and. I mean, I'm really, really spoiled to be the first one to admit that. I never want for anything at the school district. We have uh, lots of different ways that we fund things, and I, I can only imagine some of you that are really fighting for funding, how much more difficult that makes an already difficult job. Uh, and luckily, I really don't have to um, fight for a lot of funding. Uh, in 2015-16, my first STEAM guitar project, is what we call it, um, class ran. It was one full class. Uh, we were an A-B schedule, so I meet them every other day, 86 minutes, and they were they allowed me to write this as a full year course. So we have lots of time, a lot of contact time with the kids over the course of the year. Uh, this year, 2016-2017, the enrollment doubled for that class. So I'm running two full class periods uh, of STEM guitar in my program. Okay, so this, the STEM guitar curriculum was designed to increase enrollment in all of uh, the tech ed programs at Windsor High School. The course title is STEAM Guitar Project, a Tour of Technology Education. I teach the class uh, and they've blocked out two rooms for me, the CAD lab and the woodwork shop. So we, we go between the two rooms pretty, um, we spend about half time in, in each of the, in the labs in the beginning. We'll be learning CAD and then working on shaping bodies. I, I find that in 86 minutes, some of the kids will get really tired of just doing CAD work that whole time. And some kids will get really tired of working hard on shaping guitar bodies. So I split it and we, we go back and forth between the two shops. Uh, we have six shops at Windsor High School. We have a manufacturing slash metal shop. CAD lab, uh, woodworking slash construction, graphics and photography, automotive and aerospace, 
and our sixth is the digital media and video production. And so I'll talk a little bit about how I incorporate each one of those programs into the curriculum that I wrote for the class. And um, each student in each of these classes, it's designed that they'll spend and have at least one lesson with the teacher in each of these labs. So that I, th I find if, they, if they're introduced to the teacher and they enjoy what they did with that teacher, there's a possibility if they, you know, if CAD wasn't for them or Woodshop wasn't for them, they will enroll in another class within the department. And so I was really hoping to bolster all that we have to offer in Tech Ed and keep students enrolled there. Okay. So in the manufacturing lab, um, and again, this is how the curriculum was written. This isn't exactly how it came across last year. And so this is kind of what I'm looking to achieve uh, this year and the years going forward. Last year was my pilot year with a full class, and we did a couple of the things listed here, but we were lucky just to finish our guitars. It was a scramble at the end to finish them. I learned a lot from last year, and I'm working to tweak and modify uh, the curriculum that I wrote and the way that I did things last year to make it fit better to the way that I, to the curriculum that I wrote for the class. And so manufacturing, uh, one of the example projects that we can do with them is to um, do a CNC project on the CNC mill that we have in the shop. Uh, and one of the things that we talked about doing, uh, the manufacturing teacher and I, was building a fixture for them and having them design and, and make something uh, customized with the neck plate. Um, the manufacturing teacher has since been promoted to my boss now, so he did his six-year program, he's in administration now, and we didn't have anybody fill the shop. So if anybody is uh, looking for a job in Connecticut or knows somebody that is, let me know. We need a manufacturing teacher. Um, in the CAD lab, again, we're using, we're using CAD software. Uh, we're using Mastercam for, for toolpath creation. Uh, we have the laser engraver and we have 3D printing. And so example projects are, again, the epoxy inlays that, I, that you saw the fretboards earlier. Um, I thought it would be a lot easier to incorporate 3D printing projects into the guitar. And besides them being able to design in 3D their, their guitar and print a small model of it, we really were kind of stretching to figure out how we can use 3D printing. Uh, one kid last year had um, inconsistencies in his fretboard and the first fret space was incorrect. So we actually 3D printed an offset nut so it got it closer to the first fret. Um, so that was one way that we were able to, to use 3D printing. Uh, other than that, we're, we're still looking for ideas. What's that? Perfect. Okay. That's why I love this. Have you seen anybody do that yet? Uh-huh. You done it? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks for the ideas. Um, so in the wood shop, um, we obviously do a lot in the wood shop with, um, with shaping our bodies and, and designing our, our necks and um, you know, half the time is spent in there. We also have access to CNC routers. I have an independent study student this year who took the STEM guitar project last year. A really bright kid, wanted to be an actuary. Uh, and then since taking the STEM guitar, he is, he's in my room two or three blocks a, um, a day. And he, he's in my advanced drafting class now, my independent study. Uh, and then just during his, free t his, his lunch period, and he's got um, early release, so he comes in during that period as well. He's just down there all the time, and he's he's switching his major to um, mechanical engineering. So I was happy to hear that. And this is in one quarter. Never have. <laughs> first prototype off this off the router I thought it was gonna take him half a year to do that but he just just took to all it took to um, the, the design 
you know, we only did 2D modeling mostly last um, in, in the STEM guitar class. He, he'd done some solid modeling now, and he never used the um, Mastercam before. He wrote his own tool paths, and, and then we went and ran, and he did all his own glue ups. And so, in one quarter of a, of a year to, to get through this, I was really impressed with him uh, getting there. Uh, so the graphics lab, so example projects are students design their own custom logo for their guitar as if they were a custom guitar shop. Uh, so that, that neck plate came around earlier as well. Um, this, this girl had this logo of this, this flame in her uh, pyro synth, which I'm not even sure what she, that's just what she came up with for a name. And I said, well, how does that relate to the guitar? What is that? And so then she added that, that top part that looks... Like a, like a note to uh, to give it more of a, a music theme to it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty creative. And so we have, we work with the graphics teacher and they design those and he's got rubrics for assessing. Uh, they go through the thumbnail process. So it's nice working together in collaboration like that. Our automotive um, shop, he is the only one, we used to have a full electronics program, but they uh, wasn't well attended, so they, get, they, they disbanded that. And our auto shop <coughs> teacher now is the only one that does anything with electronics and electrical. So uh, he talks to them about how all of these electronics work, and he, he walks them through the process of, of soldering and, and how the potentiometers work, what they do, how it, how it affects what you're, what you're playing out of the guitar. Our digital media lab, uh, students are responsible for taking pictures and videos throughout the entire process. So we are a one-to-one -one district, so they all have their Chromebooks to use, but we also, most of them have phones, and so they, I talked to them about from day one how they should be taking pictures and videos from the, of the whole process. Our video production teacher comes in and talks to them about how to get good shots, to hold the camera landscape, not, you know, not, not the other way, not, not portrait format. And just talk to them about what what is good uh, media, and, and get in there and show us things that we're not just seeing walking into the room. You want to get down there on the level, and uh, some great examples of that from um, Dylan Dylan's video. How just the GoPro is right on there when you're standing. And it's not something our eye is seeing, and so it really makes it for a much more interesting video. So he does many lessons about capturing good media, storyboarding, and designing designing their documentary process. And depending on the group, they're either taught to edit. So some of my students had more time, so they went and talked with uh, Mr. Gooden, which is our video production teacher, and he taught them to edit. Uh, but some of them didn't have as much time, and so it was one of Mr. Gooden's client projects where my students were his clients. And so they would talk about, this is my vision for the project and the video production students would put it together for them. And so both ways uh, worked out. And again, the example project was, was their documentary in the end. So now to the enrollment data and we, haven't, we don't have enough data to really sense a trend yet, but Looking at last year to this year's data, um, uh, one minute. Sure. so we're showing the, the number of enrollment and the number of students and then the um, duplicated seats, so if, they, if you're taking more than one class. And so you can see there's a huge jump. The enrollment's increased, but the number of, of seats has increased significantly. So again, it's one year, so it's hard to tell if it's a trend, if it's trending up, but it's a significant jump. It's about a 6% increase in just that time frame. And so really, the, the, that's, that's the hard data, but the, the soft data is that a full course load at my school, it's an A-B schedule. We teach five classes, and we're, we're uh, responsible for one duty period, and that gives us a prep period each day. Um, I've increased to six classes, and they got rid of my duty. Um, which comes with, it, with a, a nice um, stipend on top of it because of the two STEM guitar classes running. And so it's, it's, it's for me, it's really right there. Um, again, my email, if you guys have any questions about that, I'm happy to share the curriculum that I wrote with anybody who wants to 
see it.